Hey guys, Chris Arnone, the Bearded Gamer, here for BlizzPlanet.com. We are at the 2012 MLG Spring Championships, and we're here with Leah artist Alan Dilling for uh, StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm. Uh, thanks for joining us here. I'm yeah, excited about this. And uh, so, we're going to get right into this. What is sort of, is there a major design theme or design theme change for Heart of the Swarm coming out of uh, Wings of Liberty? Uh, it's hard to say if there's one theme, but the, the biggest change we have is the fact that it's Zerg centric. It's obviously got Terran's uh, focus on uh, Wings of Liberty. <clears throat> this is all about Kerrigan's journey, and it's very Zerg centric and a lot of cool. Basic, basically, we took everything from the ground up and redid it for Zerg. It's not just a simple expansion pack where we put some Zerg textures over the old proto or the old uh, Terran stuff. It's like ground up, brand new, full fledged game in itself. Um, the campaign is really awesome. Besides just having Kerrigan as your main character, you're playing through it, and, and she gets abilities as you go through. You also have complete control of the Zerg army and, and uh, all the units you're used to. You can actually split them off into different strains. So, say so you might have like a Zerg wing, um, and then you can actually play an Im evolution mission. So, you can choose kind of like, I want the Zerg to play this way or this way, and then you come back, you get to make it like a, say, a Bane lean or an Ultra List. Any of those things all have different strains. So, your whole army is very customizable at the end of the day. Um, and of course, multiplayer. We've tried to learn from Wings of Liberty, and we've gone through and made little tweaks here and there, made new units, gave old units new abilities, and so it's, it really is a full-fledged game by itself. Okay. Um, now, I'm sure you've heard this comparison for years now about StarCraft to, to Starship Troopers, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, the whole Marines versus you know, sort of an infestation kind of thing, but I wonder what influences outside of gaming, you know, other sci-fi or other art things come into play when you're making your designs for StarCraft II? Yeah, that's a good question. It's, it's a lot, of, it's pretty much everything. Like, um, I'll read books, you know, like comic books, sci-fi books, fantasy books, um, you know, even looking at biology books and, and this nature itself. Like, yes. like for Zerg, underwater critters are, are awesome. Like this, you know, this crazy stuff you see at the bottom of some trench somewhere. Um, but also, of course, there's like aliens and, you know, the typical franchises, you know, like right now Prometheus is out, like that kind of stuff. Um, you know, Transformers, we're all the big geeks, you know, Lord of the Rings, all those things factor in. And so there's no direct comparisons to any of them, but we definitely get, you know, enthused and just geeked up about stuff. Do you have any specific, specific examples? Battle Hell looks a lot like a Transformer. Uh, no, I think that was, uh, you know, it's funny, that one really is, we had somebody make it, um, Steve, one of our artists, it was basically like, hey, you got to take all the geometry that's already on that guy and make something new out of it. So it was, it was really, you know, form follows function in, in that case. Um, there was like a, uh, I think a Riddick movie out a couple years ago mm -hmm. where the, uh, you know, the sun would come over and burn the planet up. And so that's, yeah. that, that led to a level in uh, Wings of Liberty. So that kind of stuff where, you know, we kind of take notes, like something that's pretty cool, we want to try that out. but. We all put our, our own spin on it too, of course. So, speaking of uh, form versus versus function, you have to lead right into my next question. I'm curious, you know, on, on your all's end, how many of these different units start off as, uh, you know, function, where it's like the the team that's developing and making balances. We need a unit that does this, and then they come to you to make it look cool. Versus how many things start off as, you know, a sketch, a design concept, and then it goes to them, and they like, oh, it should do this in the game. You know, what's what's that balance like? It's kind of a combination. I mean, obviously the design comes first, like gameplay first is, is one of our tech mottos. Um, but sometimes they'll be like, hey, we need like anti-air unit. And you know, for the Zerg, we'll be like, okay, cool, we'll come up with some stuff like, well, you know, maybe this guy has like this cool tentacle whip thing and he just goes on and latches on and attacks him. And like, well, I we never thought about that. But yeah, like, that, you know, it changes the numbers a little bit, but so it's, it's not a give and take. Like, they'll definitely give us some parameters and we'll go in and then they'll make um, some concessions based on it. It's like super cool and really sells in. It's fun art and it doesn't break the game. So they'll change the balance numbers and some of the abilities to make it work. So it, it's, it's really fun working with those guys. They're really smart and they give us a lot of freedom to just do, you know, previews or stuff. I'm sure. Uh, speaking of these things, so they were shown in the press uh, release thing that we saw this morning, the presentation, that, like some design concepts for some units that have never made it into the game. May never make it into the game. Or right. If you have any favorites that you guys like worked on, you thought, man, this is so awesome, and then at the end they just pulled it out. Yeah, last BlizzCon actually we just announced a bunch of units and then mm -hmm. a couple of those didn't make it for the final pass. Um, there was a Pro I love the Protoss, that's my favorite race. And so there's a replicator, I believe we called it back in the day. Um, internally, we always have like six different names for everything, so it's hard to keep track. But it's basically just a spinning ball of energy and metal just spinning around, and it could teleport into or transform to any other unit, right? So, oh, that's perfect. It balances itself. Yeah. And it was just too powerful at the end of the day. And so, but visually, we're like, oh, that's so cool and geeky. And so we're trying to, like, sometimes we'll talk about ideas of, uh, well, that, we like that core a lot. Maybe we'll put that core into like you know, the, the mothership core, and we'll you know we'll kind of tra transfer things over. Or if it's really cool and we know there's just no, no spot for it, 
we'll be like, well, we have another expansion left, and let's just put it in that. At the very least, we'll put it in the campaign. We'll, we'll use it somewhere. Yeah. So, uh, gotcha. And uh, now, let's talk about some specific units that we saw. I wonder maybe if you could tell me a little bit about the, the inspiration <coughs> behind that. Uh, we were talking about the battle plan. What about like the Tempest? What, what was the thought process behind that? Um, yeah, Sam Diddy, our director, actually came up with a couple sketches, and it's funny. Sometimes we'll have full-on, you know, color sketches, very nice concepts, but everything's super detailed. And I think that one is more like the back of a napkin, like, here's a cool C shape, it's got a big energy ball in the middle of it, and we're like, yeah, we start playing around with shapes, and like, they're just so simple, like, okay, let's build that, and then as we built it, oftentimes we'll, we'll go ahead and modify it, kind of on the fly, put our own, we'll spin on it. So as it passes from, from artist to artist, it kind of get a little bit of different uh, influences. Um, that one actually started out with a, a little bit bigger plaza ball. Mm -hmm. It used to be like an anti-air unit. And it's a big AOE blast, and now it's it's more like a big long-range siege weapon. Yeah. Um, so we had to shrink down to some of the effects a little bit, which is always a bummer. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, that one is just something that just felt like really iconic. Like the Protoss have such sweeping, kind of organic you know, tech lines. And so we just wanted something that really stood out for silhouettes. Especially in a fast-paced game like StarCraft, obviously. Yeah. The silhouette is really important. So. Yeah. So what about the, uh, the Marauder? Uh, the Marauder, it was just in it, like, one kind of mechanize the, the whole Terran army. Like, we have the Marines, they're kind of spaces, they're kind of like mechs, but not really. We have, you know, the Viking, and before that was the, the Goliath. We're like, well, what's something in between where it's just kind of like a beefy unit? It's kind of like an orc versus an ogre kind of vibe. You know, just a little bit bigger, but he's not a full on mech. Right. And it's really wanted, like, a tough guy feel to him. Okay. And uh, what, what's actually going on with that, uh, the Widow Mine? I mean, they said this was like a crazy early art thing. So what's, what's that, what, what are you guys thinking that it might actually start to look like here? It looks similar in, in general. It'll probably have four legs and be like a bit of a Terran crawler. You know, it won't look too high tech. We'll be hovering around like a Protoss unit. Um, but yeah, right now we're using a little bit of temp art, so we're always yeah. a little squeamish about having to show that off. Um, but eventually it's going to be pretty cool because it's, uh, people at first glance think it's a spider mine. I think it's maybe that's some of the temp art we're actually using right now. Mm -hmm. um, but it's pretty cool because it, uh, when it attacks air, I don't know if you've seen it see in action yet, but yeah, it burrows yeah. in the ground and, and all of a sudden so he flies over and this thing just rockets up and attaches on and you got like six seconds to, you know, get the hell out of there before it blows up. And so, um, just internal play tests have been pretty positive with that thing, so I'm anxious to go downstairs and see what their, uh, how it works out with everybody else. Well, uh, we, we heard some uh, some words about the, uh, the creep and, and the launch the creep and how the art's just not working for that, and uh, so you got any, any words for uh, those guys that were complaining about the art? Well, we're going to show that off um, later. For, for the beta, we'll have all the final art, which right, is right. coming up really soon, actually. Um, but, really yeah. soon, you heard it. Really soon. <laughs> summer, <laughs> summer 2012. Um, so uh, basically, I do a lot of the effects, and uh, we just were like, yeah, you know, it's not really up to par yet, and uh, we made some uh, some tweaks to it, and we're like, let's just wait and show off final art later, and not uh, try and jam something right now for no reasons. So, right. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely gonna be creepy. I think it's one thing, obviously, just Zerg in general are creepy, but it's because this is hard. The swarm is even more pressure to make the new Zerg units really stand out and just be kind of gross, and like the like the swarm moves is is kind of like yeah. just creepy. And things are bubbling out of his back, and it's just yeah. And so we, we got a lot of fun with that. Yeah, it's like 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 HR Geiger a lot when you're talking Zerg. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you can't tell. You know. right, right, right. Thanks so much for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, looking forward to Heart of the Swarm very much. Excellent. Thanks a lot. Thank you.